guys, it's Jody. Today's video, I'm gonna do something a little different. I wanted to walk you through how I mix up my pigments. I know that sometimes there's some confusion on how to uh, go about mixing them. You know, do you disperse them first, add them to your PM? Can you add them to your PM directly? And I've I've tested all of those ways and I just wanted to, to show you and walk you through what works best for me and uh, how I use them in my blooms. So I kind of wanted to walk you through mixing up. I'm going to mix them up in both of my pouring mediums because they do look different, uh, especially with the Glidden. And then I've found, I've been testing a third pouring medium mix, kind of, <laughs> that I haven't revealed only because I haven't been able to get it to work with all paints, um, but I really like how it works with pigments. So I'm I'm gonna add that in as well into this video, not to confuse you any I anymore, but just as an additional option, it, it really isn't any other ingredients that I don't already have in my pouring medium. So we'll get to that. Uh, and then after I mix them up and walk you through all of that, I wanted to test them out each one um, on a little test panel and you know, we'll we'll paint together and then I'll show you them wet and then I'll show you them dry so you can see the variances and how they might dry a little bit different depending on the pouring medium, the varnish you use and all that good stuff. So let's go get started. All right, the first thing I want to address really quick is safety. So with pigments, especially when you're mixing them and you're taking them out of the container. They are a loose particle and they can get into the air and into your lungs. So it's, it is better if you're wearing a dust mask when you're mixing them up. I'm not going to only because you won't be able to hear me as well. And I will be trying to hold my breath as I'm first mixing them just so I don't get exposed to them. But I wanted to point that out because I'm, I'm a firm believer in safety first. So Today I'm gonna to mix up uh, two different pigments, uh, two of my favorite pigments that I use. I'm not um, affiliated with any of them. I just really love using them and they work really well. Is the, uh, the This Little Piggy. Let's see if you can see that. This one is Grenache. Am I saying that right? Grenache, it's, it looks like a really beautiful red. And then um, color art primary elements. I have this one. I'm not sure if you can still get it, but uh, Bougainvillea. I've had it. A, I've had it for a while. Let's see if that comes up. But we're gonna mix those these two up three different ways. Um, the first one I'm gonna be using is my Glidden Minwax, which you've seen me use before, and I do have a separate video on how I mix this up. If anybody's interested in using this. Uh, it's always linked below in the description portion of this video, but I'll also um, attach it into this video as well as kind of a little link. But it's always mixed three to one. And then my Bare Glidden Joe Sonia that I recently started using within the last month or two. I really like this one as well. And, and I like that they work well together. You can mix certain... I I've liked mixing um pigments and anything iridescent with this because with the bear it just kind of stands out that much more with the glidden only it's a little bit more muted because it does have some titanium white in it but i like both options depending on the look i'm going for in my in my painting so but this one is always mixed two parts bear one part glidden one part Josonia. and i have a mixing video on this one as well uh, and it's down in the description, the link, if you're, if you're wanting to see how I mix it up. And now this third one that I said I've been testing out, um, it is using the Bear, using the Josonia, and then a little bit of the polycrylic that I tested a few videos back that I really liked. Um, I really like this for pigments. I, I, I was testing it just... I was just doing a test on pigments, many different ways to test to uh, mix it up, just to see how it would look in comparison to my Bare Glidden. I had a feeling the Bare would be a little bit more clear, and it is, so that's another option. Um, but anyways, I 
mixed this up. I don't have a mixing video for this because I've only just started testing it. Once I feel more confident with it, um, and I have only tested it with pigments and tube paints. I did not like it with tube paints. It was just way too thick and was not drying the way I wanted it to. But more to come on that. I'm, I'm still working through it. But anyways, this one, how I mixed it was two parts of the bear, one part of the Joe Sonia, and then a half a part of the polycrylic just to thin it out even more. So we're going to mix with these three pouring mediums today. And then we'll get to painting those later. So let's get started with we're gonna do we're gonna do the grenache first with the glidden minwax so what i usually do and i hate i really hate saying this but i don't i don't measure so i'm gonna guesstimate uh how much i'm putting in here i usually just cover the bottom i would say that's probably maybe a teaspoon of the pouring medium this is a three ounce lidded container. Oops. And then these little spoons I get, um, I get these at the Dollar Tree in the party section. I usually grab probably about that much. I would say that is maybe a half a teaspoon. Let's cover that back up. And then I just kind of carefully stir it until all the pigment is dispersed. If you see any little lumps in there or Anything that you see is not getting dispersed. I kind of, I kind of go around the edges and with the back of the spoon, or if you're using a stick, just to get everything dissolved in there. Wow, that's really pretty. I'm excited to see how these mix up with the three different mediums. But this looks really pretty with the first one. And I have not mixed up either of these pigments before. So I don't know what they look like. <laughs> Alright, that looks pretty good. And now I'm just going to add... Um, let's see... Probably about another tablespoon, if I have to guess. Maybe a little less. I don't know if you can see as I'm mixing it, it kind of gives it, there's like a hue, like almost a, like a white cast hue. and. That's the titanium white in in the Glidden Min Wax, but it still has a nice iridescence to it. That looks really well mixed up. So that's the consistency of this one, if you could see it. Oops. There we go. All right. We're going to put that aside. We're going to mix up the, uh, the same pigment with the Bare Glidden Josonia mixture. Get some stir that really quick. And this one obviously is a little bit thicker. All right, again, I'm gonna put, oops. All right, let's get that to stand up straight. We'll put a little bit in the bottom. Again, roughly the same amount, about a teaspoon. And then I'm going to come in with the pigment again. About that much. Oops, a bit more. Roughly about a half a teaspoon. Just 
start stirring that slowly. I start I stir it really slow only because <laughs> I get overzealous sometimes and then I have powder flying everywhere. So I have to really mind how I'm stirring this. <laughs> But once I can see that I've gotten at least all the powder wet, then I'll start being a little bit more aggressive with it to get the any um, pigment lumps or bumps dissolved. And already you can see a difference since this has some of the bare in it with the glidden. You can already see a difference. And this is why I originally started using this for iridescence and pigments because it just, um, it gave it a little bit more bling. If you don't want the muted effect, this gave it a bit more bling. All right, I'm gonna add some more of the pouring medium now. I would add at least a tablespoon If it still feels a little too thick, you could add a touch more pouring medium. Or if it's if you feel like it's completely paled your pigment, I would add a bit more pigment then. And this one is going to be a little bit thicker because it does have the bare the, the as opposed to the last one we just mixed up because glidden is thinner. See that now. That's really rich. <clears throat> Whoa! Man down. Uh, let me get. Let me get it down really quick. I want to show you the comparison of this uh, the glidden and then the bare glidden already. You can see. You see that camera's picking it up this is is it's deeper this is lighter and this is deeper all right and now we're gonna do the third option okay and now we have the uh the bear Josonia poly which again was two parts of the bear uh the one part of the Josonia and then a half a part of the poly so for example I did uh, tablespoons because I like to do it in smaller batches for this one because I don't use as much. Um, I did four tablespoons of the bear, two tablespoons of the Josonia, and then one tablespoon of the Poly. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometimes my math too. But this is the consistency. It's a little bit thinner. That uh, the poly helps thin it just that bear just a little bit more. Here's what the the uh, glidden bear looks like, and then this is the. Well, actually, it's it is pretty similar, I would say. And I still and and that's interesting. Now that I'm looking at both of them like this, actually, this is a little bit thicker than this one. And for some reason, <laughs> I was having I'm just having trouble with this new one that I'm still testing with tube paints. It's just not working the way I want it to. And maybe I just need to test more. So, and I, I don't want that to discourage you from trying it yourself with tube paints or anything else. This is just me and my testing and I haven't been able to get it to work the way I want it or the way I see it or the way I need it to work. So <clears throat> I want this to be another option for you. All right. Again, we're going to be putting in about a teaspoon of the pouring medium, and then we'll put in about a half a teaspoon of the 
pigment. And always when you, you know, when you measure, and it, the reason I don't measure is because it, it's, everything has a different consistency. So it's really difficult to um, give you an exact, exact, it's, it's, it's really trial and error. And I know that that can be frustrating, especially when, when I started, when I was really new with fluid art and I was looking, how do I do this? How you know, this is frustrating. I don't understand parts and I don't understand, you know, give me tablespoons and, you know, but once I learned that it's the consistency that you're looking for and not necessarily an exact recipe because one recipe works for one person, but very well won't work for another unless you tweak it even slightly. So please keep that in, in mind. Um, I want all of you to be able to, to do this successfully. It's just, um, your environment plays a role where you are. Wow. And you can even see now a difference. Uh, since there is no glidden in this one, so there isn't any titanium white whatsoever. So it is going to give you uh, a very clear um, version of your color. And I'm going to show you, show you a little test I did on paper. Uh, after I mix this up, I just remembered about it, and it might be something that would be neat for you to see. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's see how that looks. Okay, now I'm going to add about another tablespoon of. Pouring medium. And again, you can always adjust. Um, you can add a little more, add a little more pigment if it, you know, it's all about the color you're looking for, the, you know, the, the richness. And again, you're going to see a hue at first, but that's normal. And same with tube paints and fluid paints. When you mix them with your pouring medium, pigments will separate your um, the the varnish and the base you use it'll look like there's a, there's a hue on top or it's floating if it if you let it sit for a day or two you'll have to come back in and stir it it's the, it's just the normal process of the paint separating it happens to every paint if it sits long enough but I've noticed with these pouring mediums and mixing them even just a day or so though some the the minwax especially the uh the with the bear it takes a few more days but they all eventually separate and you just have to restore it wow <laughs> that is luscious <laughs> now if you can see what i see in there that's a nice consistency okay now i'm going to show you the the difference is just looking at them wet, and I hope the camera picks them up. So here's what we just mixed. You see how clear that is? And then here is the bare glidden. It's clear, but there is kind of an underlying little something in there, and that is from the glidden. But it's still got a really nice shimmer to it. This obviously is the most shimmer. This is probably the middleman shimmer. And then this poor little guy over here is the muted shimmer. <laughs> but I, I love them all just the same. I use them all for different purposes. And you might like one over the other. There's the... Uh, oops. There's the Minwax again. That's the thinnest. And if you're... Yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty good. Sometimes, it, if I want it just to be a touch thicker, I'll add this uh, heavy gel gloss. Just, I mean, you literally need just a tiny, tiny amount, not even pea size. Um, let's see if I can... I'm going to leave these here and bring the camera down so you can see all three. Let me just get some of these 
little bubbles pop. This is another way of combat bubbles. <laughs> just kind of bang it, <laughs> let them come up and disperse out. Okay. All right. And there's all three of them. Minwax, or Glidden Minwax, Bear Glidden, Bear Joe Sonia Polly. All right. Now I'm going to put these aside and let them rest. And we're going to mix up the color art pigment the same with the same three. So we can see how well that mixes up with all three of these pouring mediums. Where's my, there's my Glidden. All right. Again, about a teaspoon of the pouring medium. Take about half a half a teaspoon of the pigment. Disperse it slowly at first just to get this. Ooh, wow. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> wow, that's so pretty. And with the color art pigments, I've noticed uh, uh, some other pigments as also, but especially the color art, what you see dry may not be what it turns into wet. And that, I mean, that's just, that's normal. So a lot of times I'll actually, here's one that I have. This is tanzanite. I'll actually put a little blob of it wet to let it dry. So I know, okay, this is what it looks like in the container. And then this is what it looks like when it's wet. So Just keep that in mind if you want to be able to remember what it looks like wet. But gosh, that is super pretty. All right, I'm going to add about roughly a, roughly a tablespoon, but maybe a little bit less. really pretty. That's really pretty. Can you see that? Move this camera over just a touch. Okay. We got that one. Now the next one we're going to do, this one is the, the Bear Glidden. Again, Roughly a teaspoon. <clears throat> and if for some reason you feel like you've added, um, so if you put too much pouring medium, it'll get, it'll be too runny. Just add a little bit more pigment at your first initial disperse. If you have added too much pigment and not enough pouring medium and it kind of gets really pasty on you just add a little bit more pouring medium until you get that you know nice kind of creamy runny consistency and I'll show you I'll show you again here all right about a half a teaspoon of pigment Ooh, yeah, wow. <laughs> this is fun. I love seeing the different shades it makes. <laughs> okay. That looks good. And some pigments you'll find it just takes a little bit longer to disperse than others like this color art seems to be mixing in a little bit easier um, but also I see just by looking at the powder granules the, the, the granule the granules are bigger 
so they're dispersing a bit easier than the uh, the last pigment. It was a, a bit more fine, so it just took a little bit longer to disperse. So keep that in mind that not every pigment is going to disperse exactly. It might just take just a touch longer, but ooh, look at that. You see that? Okay, <clears throat> let's add roughly a tablespoon more. Gorgeous. It took me a long time to use pigments. Um, they were very intimidating for me for quite some time, and I don't know why. <laughs> it was just something I needed to get over maybe, but now I can't stop using them. <laughs> and they're relatively easy to use. I mean, if you're a beginner, maybe start with one. Don't overload your painting with all pigments. It, it might be a little overwhelming. Maybe start with one or two. Ooh, look at that. That looks real nice. See, I already, I can see the difference. Again, this, <clears throat> this hand has the uh, bare glidden, and then this is the, it almost gives it, this is a bit pinkier, and this is a bit, oops, I'm off camera. Sorry about that. <clears throat> this is a bit uh, pinkier, a bit more magenta, it looks almost. You can see that. And then this one is a bit richer. I'm not seeing so much a hue with this one. It's just a touch lighter, a bit more pinkier. And this one has a bit more purple, the purpley. Those are my new words, pinky, purpley, <laughs> coming out. <laughs> All right. And the third one, finally. Use that to prop this up. This is the, I got the right one, yep. Yeah. This is the Bear Josonia Poly. And again, about a teaspoon. And then about half a teaspoon. That, that one might have even been a quarter. Anywhere between a quarter and a half a teaspoon. I usually tend to add a little bit more than a little bit less. But you can uh, adjust accordingly either way. Wow. <laughs> Ooh, that's yummy. All right, we'll add about a tablespoon more of the, oops, might have been a little more <clears throat> of the pouring medium. Ooh, yeah, that's super rich. See that? All right, this one is the bear with the Josonia. And then this one is the bear glidden. And even from those two, you can see the sparkle. Uh, this, this, this bear Josonia poly. If you want major bling, this is this is the one you want to use for your pigments. I'm I've uh, been noticing. I'm still going to use all three for what I'm going to use them for, but there's definitely something to be said about this bear with the Joe Sonia and the Polly. All right, I'm going to bring you down like I did with the last three and show you. All right, just by looking at all three, this is the. Uh, 
the bear with the Josonia Poly. This is the bear Glidden. And then this is the Glidden Minwag. Here's the color art uh, that I just mixed up. I just moved it over out of the light because I didn't want the glare. But this one, this one here is the, the bear Josonia Poly. And then the bear Glidden. And then the Glidden Minwax. All right, here's the three of this little pigment. I just moved it out of the light. This is the the Bear Josonia Poly. This is the Bear Glidden, and then this is the Glidden Minwax. You see the difference in them. Before we get started on the paintings, I just wanted to show you really quick something that I did. Um, I put all the different pouring mediums that I've ever used on this parchment paper and let it dry. You've seen me mixing and what they look like wet. They all typically have kind of a white hue to it. Uh, this Dutch Boy Joe Sonia, I don't use too much anymore. I still love it, but I'm trying to use things more that uh, people can get readily available. Uh, the Dutch Boy is from Menards and that is a Midwestern, I believe it's a Midwestern hardware store. So I I use that from time to time, but this is the Glidden Minwax. This is how it dries. It's got like a white hue to it. I on, honestly, I don't notice the color being taken away when I use it in my mixes. Maybe you can, but I, I love the effect that it gives me for, for what I'm looking for. But anyway, this is what it looks like dried. And then this is the Bear Glidden Josonia dried. It does have a little bit of a, oops, a little bit of a tint of, of white in there, but less so than straight up the Glidden Minwax. And then this, this was before I discovered the polycrylic. This was just Bear Josonia. And I mean, that is crystal clear, which is why you're seeing the pigments react the way they are. So I just thought I'd th show that to you really quick. Just All right. Now we're going to start painting. This is probably going to be a long video, but I just wanted it. I wanted to get all my information together in one place. So I'm sorry if it's really long. You can fast forward to the parts you need to. I will not be offended. So uh, the next part here, we're going to test each of the three ones. So we'll do three of these. These are my uh, four by six panels that I like to use for my test pieces. So the pillow I'm going to be using today is the Glidden, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the Glidden Premium, the pure white base one um, in the eggshell. And this first test is going to be with the uh, the Glidden Minwax pigments that we mixed up. So I'm going to put down a little bit of this Grenache. And then a little bit of this Bougainvillea, the color art. And I'm going to be a little fancy today and use a couple different cell activators <laughs> just to make it a little bit more fun so it's not just a, a boring test. I'm going to put some uh, black cell activator. This is my Amsterdam, the uh, oxide black that I used. Always mixed four to one. But again, it's a guide. If you want yours a touch thicker, I would add a little bit more paint. If you want it a bit thinner, then I would add a little bit more Floetrol. And then this is the Amsterdam Greenish Blue. Nope, turquoise. Turquoise green. <laughs> Sorry. going to do too much embellishing because these are just little tests but I've got to add a little bit in here just for a little bit of whimsy 
All right. That looks really good. I'm going to bring this over to my spinner box. We're going to spin it out. Adding just a touch more pillow to help it spin. <clears throat> it's a nice shimmer from these pigments. Again, this is the Glidden Min Wax. So it's not going to be in your face. In your face bling. But it it does have a nice sheen to it. You can see that. Alrighty. Here we go. So pretty those colors colors together glad I, I'm glad I added that blue <clears throat> it's got a nice little sheen to it all right what I'm gonna do is we're gonna do all three of these uh, tests and then I will bring you over for flyovers of all three so you can see all three and kind of compare them wet and then I'll come back at the end with the dried results. So here's the first one. How it looks wet. The uh, This is the Glidden Min Wax. All right, next one is going to be the, the Bare Glidden Mixture of the two pigments. As I'm popping bubbles here. Oh, um, I did want to mention, I, I've had a few people ask me lately why I don't use a torch, um, why I'm always popping either with a skewer or a toothpick. And the reason is the Bloom's technique is a little bit different in that you're using ingredients that are more volatile, meaning they uh, can be a bit more flammable, especially the varnish. They uh, can scorch and burn a lot easier than uh, your other pouring mediums. And they also can release toxins in the air, uh, the, the varnish and the house paint. So I highly advise against wear, uh, using a torch. But if you're going to, I would really recommend that you wear some sort of safety gear, a respirator or something, just so you're not breathing it in and also have a fire extinguisher nearby just just in case so you know just just take that but that is the reason why I don't I I would rather I would rather avoid those situations so I use the skewer or the toothpick all right so here is the Grenache and this is the uh, I think I said this the bear Glidden and it does mix up a bit thicker and you can already see the difference in the pigment just from the uh, the first one we just did and now the second one. This is the Bougainvillea. Uh, it's richer, definitely more sparkly. All right, again, I'm gonna use the Black Cell Activator. And then this turquoise green both Amsterdam everything will be uh, at the beginning of this video all all the products that I used will be snapshots and I don't know if you noticed that because these are thicker paints um, the paints they react just as well, but they take just a little bit longer to come up because the paints are thicker. And that is absolutely okay. But whew, I can see already a difference. You can see all the jewel tones in there. Let me bring you back overhead so you can see. Yeah. <laughs> 
wow this is gorgeous I don't really have this was very reactive I don't have any modifications that I'm gonna make <laughs> all right add just a little bit more paint just to help the paint move Whew, that is super blingy and we haven't even used the blingiest yet <laughs> This is the Bear Glidden. And that right there is why I originally started using it for my pigments, even before I knew the Bear Joe Sonia. So here we go. And I totally forgot to bring it up for you guys. Sorry. <laughs> That was close. Let's not flip the test over. All right, here's this one. Let's see how how blingy it is already. We haven't even gotten to the blingest the blingiest pigments yet. Alrighty, last one. This one is the bear by itself with the, the Glidden, or I'm sorry, the bear by itself with the Joe Sonia and a little bit of the Polly. And this one should be the blingiest. And again, it's going to be thicker because the bear is very thick. And you may find that you need to adjust it you know, um, maybe add a little bit more of the poly or omit the, the Jostonia and just use the poly. I've, I've not tried that, but maybe that's something you want to try. All right. Here is the Bougainvillea. Whew. Golly, those colors are gorgeous. Going the wrong way. They are a bit bubbly because we just mixed them up. So normally I will let them sit at least a few hours before I touch them. Um, however, I do notice, and another thing to keep in mind, the Glidden Min Wax does tend to be a bubblier pouring medium. So I let that mix, or I let that mix sit for quite some time, maybe a day ahead of time, and then I have to stir it carefully because it tends to have more bubbles in it. Um, than including the the bear the bear glidden less bubbly but still a little bit but i'm finding well <laughs> typically just the bear doesn't have as many bubbles so take that for what it's worth as well you're always going to have bubbles you're never gonna I, i've never encountered something where i don't have one bubble so just keep that in mind too. This it's just the, it's the nature of the beast, but it's all about minimizing them. All right, one more time with the black. I might add a bit more blue just to be fancy. right there. Oh, I think that looks really good. Minimal modification, so I'm just going to bring this over to the spinner instead of bringing back above. Alright. Super blingy. 
this is the blingiest of the bling, I think. Adding just a little bit more pillow. I'll remember to show you this one sorry about that <laughs> but you kind of saw it from before there's that one you see how blingy it is all righty here we go wow Hooey. <laughs> I love doing that <laughs> That's really pretty. It is the extra bling. All right, I think that's good. cleaned up really quick and then I'm going to bring you over for the flyover of all three. Here's the flyover of the first one. It's got some nice bling to it but it is a bit more subtle as you can see. And I do love this. I, I love subtle sometimes. There is a place for it. And I love how the Glidden makes those cells um I don't know, they, they, they make different cells or in different webbing than uh, when I add the bear. This is the bear glidden. <laughs> Already you can see the super bling, but it's not even the blingiest one yet. Look at that sparkle. It's so pretty. And now for the bear Joe Sonia Polly. Yep, that is the blingiest. <laughs> I mean, that sparkle. Look at that. I feel like it's the sparkle is going to jump off the canvas. I'm so excited to see how these three dry. I, I can't wait to show you the comparison. Wow, look at that. Right in there, too. So pretty. So there is all three, kind of like a overview. The Glidden Minuax, the Bear Glidden, and then the Bear Josonia Polly. So I will be back once these are dried and we will compare them, how they look, and we'll go from there. I'll be right back. And I'm back to show you the dried results of the tests we did with the pigments. <clears throat> So here is the first one with the uh, the Glidden Minwax, the the uh, the pigments I mixed up. And you see, it has a it it has a sheen to it, but it's subtle, and it does come back if you're going to resin it. Uh, varnishing it, it still kind of stays subtle, but when you resin it, it's got this really nice muted sparkle and shimmer, and I love I just love that for I I don't always want in your face bling. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe some of you want that all the time and that's awesome too but I just I I like to use it you know different things for different different types of things I'm looking for but anyway this is the Glidden Minwax what it looked like dried and then the the Bear Glidden this is the Bear Glidden you can see it's got a lot more shimmer to it but it did dry beautifully. I think this is, might be upside down. I don't remember which way this went. <laughs> but you can see the, the shimmer there too. That one dried beautifully. And now the third one, which was the, the Bear Joe Sonia Poly concoction that I was trying with the pigments. And this one is definitely the the blingiest. And I'm going to try and show you all three at the same time, but you can see that it dried beautifully. Let me see if I can 
get all these together I might bring you down and show it that way it might be easier here's the two you can see see this one is still shinier than this one even though I mean they're pretty close but you can tell and then this one is a bit more mu more muted So I'm pretty happy with how they uh, how they dried. Let me know what you think in the comments below if you prefer one over the other. I'm definitely going to use all three because <laughs> that's just who I am. But as I was coming down here to show you these, I noticed the pigments that I had mixed up for you um, on camera before we started painting. I was talking about how sometimes they separate if they sit a little bit. And a couple of them have already and I wanted to just show you just to give you a visual in case you haven't experienced it yet or maybe you have but um, I'm just gonna show you really quick all right this is the uh, Glidden Minwax you see how it's kind of separated a little bit you just all you have to do is just put your stir stick in there and just stir it gently and it'll mix right back up <clears throat> this one is the Bear Glidden and it usually it almost looks like the, well, it is, I think it's the varnish, but it has that white hue to it. So I always wonder if it's partly the Glidden as well, but this is usually what it looks like when it separates. And again, just put, put your stir stick in there and just stir it gently, just to incorporate it. And then this is the Bare Joe Sonia Poly. And again, see, it's, it's going to separate you can kind of see a little bit on the top. So it's perfectly normal. So I just wanted to, to show you, to point that out just in case anybody was wondering. So with that, I hope you found this video helpful. I really had a lot of fun putting it together. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I will certainly answer them. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Thanks so much for watching, guys.